Okay, good morning everyone. My name is Suzanne Walker and I am the supervisor at the Indiana State Library's Professional Development Office. Thank you guys so much for joining us for the webinar today. We are pleased to have Leah, Namias. hold on, Namias. I almost had it, Namias with us today to talk about Frankenstein. So I am gonna start off the webinar with a couple announcements. This webinar is provided as part of the Library Trends and Hot Topics theme. Uh, to register for other webinars available for this series or other trainings available from the Professional Development Office, please see the ISL's event calendar, which can be found on our website. Yes. I think they can't hear me anymore. Can you still hear me, everybody? Maybe they can. Yes, okay, all right, I'm going to keep going. Um, Great, so for a full list of our in-person training menu, please see our continuing education website. We have lots of ways that we try to stay connected to all of you guys. Um, for weekly updates, you of course wanna be connected to the Wednesday Word. We also have a blog. If you haven't checked out our blog, do it. Uh, that has information about our collection, interview spotlights on library staff, and information about upcoming events at the State Library. If you do have any sound issues during the webinar, please see the sound issues box that's just below the chat box. Uh, if there is a global sound issue, we will let you guys know. We'll announce it in the chat box. Um, right now, we are not having any sound issues. If you are unable to resolve any sound issues that you have, we are recording this meeting, and you can watch it offline afterwards. So today's webinar is, of course, going to be archived, like most of our webinars, and available to access and share on the State Library's uh, archive training page. And we do have your LEU available, yes, for download at the end of the webinar. So hang on till the end and you'll be able to download it. So without further ado, I am going to turn things over to Leah Namias. Yay! From the Indiana Humanities. And we are going to get her sharing her um, PowerPoint now. Pull this down. Okay, I'm sorry. That's okay. Share my screen. And I don't know why that's there, but that's fine. Share. Okay. Okay. And now we're going to go. Yeah. There we go. Hooray. We're doing it. Okay. And Lacey Gibson says hi, Leah. Hi, Lacey. Um, hi, everybody. I'm super excited to talk to you today. Um, we're going to be talking about program and grant opportunities tied to a big old statewide read of Frankenstein that will be happening in 2018. Um, and Suzanne is already telling me to slow down, so I'm going to do my best. <laughs> um, so first off on the page there, you can see our super fun, um, one of several Frankenstein designs and logos of the Indiana State Flag Torch, but with Frankenstein's face in honor of the 200th anniversary of Mary Shelley's amazing book. Um, I just wanted to make sure you had a face with a name. My name is Leah Namias. I'm the Director of Programs and Community Engagement at Indiana Humanities. Um, over the last several years, I've already gotten to correspond with several or many amazing librarians. Um, so I'm excited to hopefully work with you as part of Frankenstein programming. My contact information is on the screen here. You can also visit our website. I promise I'm the only Namias that works at Indiana Humanities, so I'm pretty easy to find there. Um, and I think you guys all get these slides later, so you'll have them there. So I'm excited to tell you that Frankenstein is alive. Ah! Yay. Um, and I apologize in advance. I have a lot of like text on screen today because there's a lot of details. Um, so I hope I don't overwhelm you. And again, you'll have these slides if you want to uh, take notes now or if you just want to sit back and listen for right now. So today's goals, I want to explain our One State, One Story Frankenstein program to everybody. Make sure you've got a good sense of what all will be happening as part of One State, One Story. I want to overview funding and program resources that are available to libraries, schools, and other organizations to take part in One State, One Story. I want to give you tips for how to prepare a successful application. Um, we don't want anybody to try and fail, so right. we want you yeah. guys to do a great job and answer whatever questions you have. We're also going to share some program ideas and other helpful hints, and you'll have a chance to share as well some of your ideas for Frankenstein programming. And then, of course, I want you to leave this webinar super excited to bring Frankenstein to life. I have a quick question. Yeah. How, how many of you guys have read Frankenstein? So just throw it in the chat box real quick. 
and we'll just have it go. Oh, fun. Yeah. Okay, good. Um, so first off, if you're not familiar with Indiana Humanities, we are a statewide organization. Um, and our mission is to encourage Hoosiers to think, read, and talk. We do that in a variety of ways through grant making and creating and delivering public programs. Um, we are not a state agency, though we sound like one. We're a nonprofit, but we do like working with our friends at the State Library. Um, and so some of you may already know us from our Novel Conversations Lending Library, or you may have received a grant or done some other program with us over the last 40 years. Um, but if you are new to Indiana Humanities, welcome, and I hope that we get to work with you soon. So the next thing I want to talk a little bit about is just our One State, One Story Franken, um, Frankenstein program. Um, this is part of Quantum Leap, which is a two-year thematic initiative exploring the intersection of STEM, science, technology, engineering, math, and medicine, and the humanities. A lot of you may have taken the webinar that we did in the spring about Quantum Leap, so you may already be familiar with this, or you've been on our website recently. You couldn't miss it if you were. Mm -hmm. um, but now is the time to talk about one of the real signature programs of Quantum Leap, which is the statewide read of Frankenstein. Um, so One State, One Story is what we're calling the big statewide read. Um, this is an ambitious statewide read that's um, timed to the 200th anniversary of the book. So 2018 is the 200th anniversary of this book's publication. Um, lots of people all over the world are going to be talking and reading this amazing book next year. We picked it because, and I'll probably get ahead of myself, it's one of the best books that's ever been written about science and technology and the difficult choices we have to make. Um, it's also a really fascinating book in a million other ways, which I can tell you about later. Um, so we want to use this as an opportunity to discuss the role of science and technology in our lives. Um, it's a partnership with the Indiana State Library and the Center for the Book, and we're incredibly grateful. We love working with you guys. We love working with you guys. Yay. <laughs> there will be programs happening in all parts of the state. So in addition to the resources I'm going to talk about on the website that will allow you to design your own programs um, and, and implement programs in your communities, we are partnering with 13 colleges and universities that will be doing all kinds of activities, including special exhibits and talks and um, online courses and film festivals, things like that. And buying first editions of the Oh book. my gosh, so I just was at Notre Dame, and they bought a first edition of Frankenstein for their special collections Amazing. library. So IU already has one, um, and uh, then Notre Dame just bought one. So you, you public libraries don't feel like you have to do this. No, 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 because you know what the going rate on a first edition of Frankenstein is? I don't want it. It's $80,000. <laughs> okay, that's what I heard from Notre Dame. Yeah, not, okay. not, 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 not realistic. But that's okay. okay. So we're also putting together a speakers bureau. I'll talk more about that. Um, we will be doing our own special kind of activities that are you know, designed and implemented by Indiana Humanities for the public, including Frankenfest in a couple of weeks. I'll talk more about that in a little bit. Um, and then, of course, community reads and um, readathon grants, which we're calling Frankenfest grants, which I'll be talking lots of details. But we're also going to have a fun podcast coming out um, about the ethics of Frankenstein. We're getting together scholars to write essays for us that can help you think about the book. So there'll be all kinds of different things happening. Um, we are focused, because this is tied to Quantum Leap, um, to how the book helps us think about science and technology. But this is a book that has so many other themes, and those are themes that will resonate in lots of ways with different communities. So themes around gender, um, fatherhood and motherhood are big themes of this book. Um, of course, lots of people know this as a story about difference or otherness, how we treat people who are different in our society, and um, how when we exclude people, it changes them. Um, it's also a book for, you know, if you're a sci-fi lover or you love horror, th this is considered one of the first um, works of both of those genres. So it's a great way to explore those genres and many, many, many other ideas. So why Frankenstein? As I said before, Frankenstein helps us think and talk about the role of science and technology in our lives. And, and there are a couple of questions that I think are like just right at the center of that discussion. What's exciting about technological change and what's scary? So Frankenstein at the time was thinking a lot about um, experiments with electricity and experiments with understanding anatomy and medicine and the brain when it was written 200 years ago. But we can use this book to talk about all kinds of science and technology in our lives. So we know that as we get new cell phones and other devices that keep us more and more connected to other people, 
Sometimes that's really exciting, but sometimes we feel that it changes things, maybe not always for the better. Of course, this is a book that's often been read as a parable for thinking about artificial intelligence and robotics, as well as um, biomedical engineering. Um, and I think the question there is, just because we can do something, should we? Frankenstein turns 200 in 2018, and so one of the other things we're going to be thinking about is how has the book inspired creative people over time? So this book has been turned into graphic novels, movies, plays, musicals, um, various types of artwork. Um, how has the story been interpreted or retold over time? And also, what's the backstory of this amazing book? So, you know, this started as a um, Mary Shelley, and she's hanging out with uh, Lord Byron and Percy Shelley, who she'd run away kind of scandalously with. They're hanging out in the mountains in Switzerland. Um, it's cold and rainy, even though it's summertime. And so they start telling each other scary stories, and she imagines this book. So, again, there's so many uh, pieces of the backstory that are really fun to tell, too. Frankenstein opens up many other important conversations. Again, I mentioned these earlier, how we treat people who are different. And I think it's also a great book for exploring the hidden stories of women in STEM, because probably, again, one, if not the most famous book <laughs> about science and technology, happens to have been written by a teenage girl. Um, and we often you know, forget that women are very important in the history of STEM. So this is a way to kind of get at that. And then, you know, this is uh, opinion, not fact, I guess. <laughs> but Frankenstein is a lot of fun and very surprising. So if you're only familiar with it from, like, the Munsters, this is a great chance to go back and revisit this book and discover it in all of its weirdness and delightfulness. Mm -hmm. So quick overview, and then we're going to go into detail about all of these. What program and grant opportunities are available from Indiana Humanities? We have community read grants. We have Frankenfest grants. We have a Frankenstein Speakers Bureau. We have Novel Conversations book sets. We're doing a digital gaming workshop. We're going to have a weekend retreat and more. So your weekend retreat, is that like summer camp for adults? It's like, yes, I would call it Hooray. book nerd camp book is really what it camp. is. So if you like hanging out with other curious Hoosiers and talking about great books, um, also, we're going to eat like Frankenstein-inspired meals, and it's going to be a lot of fun. So that happens in March. I'll tell you more about that in a little bit. So first off, the most basic, and I think probably what we have the most of to give away, are these community read grants. So these are for you to design and implement a series of three or more programs in 2018. Um, we'll talk about what those programs can be. At least one of those programs is a book discussion, because you know what? <laughs> Like, there's nothing better than sitting down and talking about a great book with other people. So again, you're doing a program series of three or more programs. At least one of those is a book discussion. What does the rest of your series look like? That is up to you. You can do read-along. So you could, and we'll talk more about this, you can do a read-along of an adaptation of the book for toddlers or for, or for teens, and those could count as your three programs. You can bring in a speaker. You could do film and, and discussions. You could do a creative writing workshop, right? You could have people write their own science fiction or own horror stories. Oh, this is a typo. I apologize. It should say mock trials, right? You can not put trials. not. You can put the creature, or Dr. Yeah. Frankenstein, on trial, not mock trails. Yeah. Um, I don't even know what that would mean. Okay, all right. But you could do you, some sort of a walk where you're walking <laughs> and talking. I like about that. Yeah, Frankenstein. right. Okay, okay. You, you made it work. On a trail. Suzanne, you saved my bacon. There you go. Um, you could do scientific experiments um, inspired by the book, or Really, the sky, you know, the sky's the limit. Your creativity is the only limiting factor here. So we're so, open to a lot of things. So one of the other programs could be an art program yes. as well? Yes, cool. absolutely. Um, and we'll talk about some of the ideas that we've had and how to find out more about those. But again, I encourage you to be creative as part of your series. So to help you be successful, and this is the thing, we want you to be successful with your series. A Community Read Grant includes $1,000. Um, this is not like a normal grant, which means it does not have to be matched. So if you are able to match that because your program budget goes over $1,000, that's great. You know, we'll ask you to tell us about that, but you do not need to match that. So you get $1,000. You can request up to 50 copies of Frankenstein um, to do programs with in your community. We will send you swag. So this includes temporary tattoos, buttons, posters, bookmarks, etc. Things that you can use to get the word out as well as to get people excited about Frankenstein. 
we are providing a detailed program guide, and I'm going to go into a lot more detail about that in a minute. So again, you're not on your own having to invent everything from scratch. And we are also putting together a speakers bureau, because you may be thinking to yourself, I'd really love to bring in someone to talk about Frankenstein, but I don't know any experts on Frankenstein. Well, we've put together this speakers bureau so that you do not have that challenge. A couple of important notes here. You will be asked as a host organization to help collect and send back some evaluation. Um, I should have mentioned at the top, we got a big national endowment for the humanities grant. Three, yes! $300,000. This is amazing. This is amazing to do all of the statewide programming. Um, but for those of you who've ever been involved with a big grant, you cannot be surprised to learn that we need to do some evaluation. So that's one thing that you'll just be asked to kind of uh, answer some questions and ask participants to answer some questions and stuff like that. Um, we have 60 of these grants available, um, so we will be awarding at least 60. If we get a lot more than this, we have kind of a contingency plan um, because we, we really don't want to say no to any organizations that, you know, kind of have a sincere desire and have the capacity to do excellent programs to not be able to. So um, please do not hesitate to apply if you're thinking about doing it. We do have a question that came in. Yeah. So you mentioned the detailed program guide. Mm -hmm. Is this available only to the people that are getting this grant, or is it going to be? It is. That's on a your great website? question. It is already on our website, it's and I will there. show you where it is. So um, it's a PDF. You can download it from our website um, today. Um, and that we wanted to have that up when the applications opened because we wanted people to kind of be able to make some informed choices <laughs> about like I think I want to do this, but am I on my own here? So how to apply. This grant, these um, uh, community read grants are open to any tax exempt organization in Indiana. So that of course includes libraries, but also schools, senior citizen centers, museums, churches, or other religious organizations. We are, we are agnostic on who applies. We want lots of Hoosiers reading this amazing book and talking about it. In your application, you will be asked to share your program plans. And so we recommend you know, that you have spent a little bit of time envisioning your series. Your plans can change um, even after the grant is awarded, but what we're really looking for are is people who've thought about this and kind of have like an idea. Um, so I would recommend a short paragraph by which I mean like three sentences max for each of your program ideas. So like we're going to do a book discussion. Okay, duh, there's probably not a lot more to say, but you might say, oh, I'm going to invite this um, retired English teacher to facilitate it or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, but then you can tell us a little bit about each of your other program ideas. We also want to know about your community. Tell us about the Hoosiers you serve. Are you urban, rural, suburban? Um, is this something that, you know, if you are a high need community in some way or another, that's very important. We like to know about your organization. You know, sometimes people tell us, like, my program budget for the year is $500. <laughs> and that helps us, that demonstrates a real need, and we really respond to that. We also want to know how the community read fits with your goals. You know, what are you trying to accomplish in your community, and how does this fit in? You'll also tell us how many books you need. You cannot choose more than 50. We'll talk about what to do if you need more than 50 books in a moment. Um, one thing to note is all of your programs should be completed by the end of 2018. Um, so we'll talk again if you want to start a little bit earlier, if it's possible to do that. But for the most part, we're really looking for a series that isn't designed and implemented all during 2018. Yeah, question. Question, do we have copies in Spanish? Uh, copies of the book? Yes. If you can put in your application that you need copies of the book, we can get you copies of the book. Um, that shouldn't be a problem. Yeah. Um, so that sounds awesome, actually. Cool. Um, so applications are now open. They are due on Halloween, of course. This year. This year, this 2017. Year. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> if you're going to do programs in 2018, you got to apply in 2017. Got it. Um, and we will let you know by December 1st. So you've got, you know, a pretty, hopefully a pretty quick turnaround. Um, you do not need to start your programs in January um, if you need a little time after notification to get your, yourself together. So applications are now open, and in a little bit I'll show you where on our website you can find that. One thing I should note, and this is true of our other applications that I'm going to talk about here in a minute, these are all things that you can't save and come back to work on. So if you 
you know, if you're like kind of person who likes to like really work on your answers and maybe needs to have them approved by someone else in your building before you submit, I would just recommend, you know, typing all your answers into a Word document and then copying and pasting when you're ready to submit. So community read grants are one kind of resource. Again, that's to design and implement your own series of three or more Frankenstein programs. But our other major kind of grant or funding opportunity we're offering are what we're calling Frankenfest grants. So these are designed for you to design and implement your own Frankenstein readathon and festival. So this is for you to put, off, put on a one-time event, but it's kind of a big, complex one-time event. Some of you may have participated or be familiar with our all-in block party program that we did in 20, 2015 and 2016. This is kind of like that, but for Frankenstein. It's, we're asking you to do kind of something really creative and imaginative. Um, it'll probably be a lot of work, but it'll be really cool payoff. So um, we are doing our own version of this event here in Indianapolis on September 30th, and you can use that as your inspiration for what you might do in your community. But we also knew because we're doing this event in Indianapolis, we wanted to have people around the state to have an opportunity to create something locally. So that's why we designed this particular grant. Your Frankenfest does need to include a readathon of the full book. So that is probably about an eight to nine hour commitment. Usually we kind of take our cues from an audio book version of Frankenstein. Mm -hmm. So again, when we say this is like a big thing, that's partly why is because of that time commitment that's involved. But you could, oh, sorry, I'm yeah. just, if I was on the webinar right now, I might be like, wow, that's a lot of reading for one person. That's a really good point, Suzanne. <laughs> the total idea here is that you invite multiple readers from your community. Okay. So for our Frankenfest, we're having people sign up for 15 minute time slots. And we've included like VIPs, like we invited the like me, like Suzanne, and we invited the mayor and the head of the police department and stuff like that, because um, we can't imagine that anyone would read for. I don't think anybody could do that. Do you think, Suzanne? Well, someone. It could. sounds like a really weird version of the Hunger Games or something, yes, right? Yeah, it does actually. For hours um, and hours. Now, Frankenfest, your Frankenfest can incorporate all kinds of other activities. You could do live performances. You could have talks going on in other parts of the building. You could do art activities. You could have fun food and drinks. Um, really, again, your imagination is the limit here. Um, and we will, again, share a lot of what we've learned. I'll tell you more of that in a minute. Again, as a host organization, you will help collect and send back evaluation to us if you do apply. We have 10 of these grants available. Um, if we get way more than 10 grants, we may be able to, you know, shake the trees and find a little bit more money. But I guess I'm telling you this to let you know it's a little bit more competitive. Um, and so when you're applying, and we'll talk about this in the next couple screens, you're going to really want to make sure you're giving us lots of detail um, and convincing us that you have got what it takes to do this. So I have a question which I think is an excellent question. Can a group of libraries submit a grant application? Oh my god, I love that idea. I do too. It would be like a Frank and Frankenfest. Yes. Right? You're yes. kind of building it together from lots of different pieces. Yeah. Well, and you know, if you think about it, several of our counties have more than one library That's right. system inside their county. That is awesome. I think that would be so fun. Again, one of the reasons we like putting together these kind of grants is because you guys have way better ideas than we could ever come up with. So that's really fun. So the answer to that question is yes. Absolutely, yes. You will probably have to designate an organization to be the budget like people. Sure. And they get the, the cash or, you know, and then they have to report back that how you distribute it locally is up to you. So what are we going to provide? We will provide, again, a $1,000 grant. And again, that does not need to be matched. Um, we are also doing, and I promise this will be the most fun training workshop you've attended in your life, unless you came to our all-in block party workshop, which was pretty fun. Um, we will do a training workshop for up to four members of your planning team. So if you're, again, working with multiple libraries in your county um, or in your region, you could bring people from each of those libraries. Um, that date has already been set. It is Friday, January 19th in Indianapolis. At least one person, usually it's the person, you know, your project director, is required to attend that. So if you are applying, make sure that you've also blocked out that date on your calendar so that you're available to attend that workshop if you are awarded. Um, we will cover your travel, and for those of you who are coming in from the corners, we will also, that can include a hotel room the night before. 
Um, so we'll cover your mileage. But again, if you're coming in from Angola or Gary, Evansville, or it, basically if it's over two and a half hours is usually kind of our, our thing. Um, and if for some reason you're closer than that, but you do need that hotel room, you just have to let us know. Um, we will also give you a starter kit full of swag and other promotional goodies. So this is going to have all kinds of fun stuff in it, including Frankensteins, which oh, are I love it. beer mugs, um, as well as temporary tattoos and signage and all kinds of stuff like that. Um, we will also provide design and communication support, um, which includes helping to customize your design files so that you can get stuff printed so that it looks polished and professional. Um, we will give you logos and templates that you can use to get the word out. Um, so anyway, we want you to be successful, and we are providing a lot of resources to help you do that. I did have a question. Mm -hmm. Do you guys have a picture of the sign? I do on our Instagram. So in a minute, okay. you, I could. So you don't want to watch me navigate well, the internet. We right are this librarians. Minute. Yeah. So I'm sure we can figure that out. So yeah. It's on their Instagram. Yeah, it's an Indiana Humanities uh, Instagram, which is a fun follow if you're not on there. Um, in general, follow us on social media. We try to have a lot of fun. And then I had one more question. Mm -hmm. Is the January 19th workshop just for the Frankenfest grants? That's or, right. Or That's is correct. It, okay, the so Community Read grants the will community. just do some webinars in January and, and uh, December and maybe into February so that you can get what you need, but you're not required to attend a workshop. Okay, so the workshops is only for the Frankenfest grant grants. winners. That's right. And there's only 10 of those. Yes. Got it. Thanks, Suzanne, for clarifying. Um, so how to apply. Again, these are open to any tax-exempt organization in the state. They are also due on Halloween, and we will notify you by December 1st. And again, like I said, because these are a little bit more competitive, the more detail you provide in your application, the more, you know, higher your chances of being awarded are. So tell us about your community and why you want to host a readathon. Tell us your program ideas. And again, this is where the more detail, the better. So I would be thinking and really envisioning what you're going to do during your event. Um, I will also say this as someone who's in the midst of planning something like this. <laughs> they're complicated. They're really fun, and your imagination will run wild. And you know, your ability to innovate with the Frankenstein theme is kind of endless. But you're going to want to spend some time really kind of envisioning um, before you sit down to write your application. Tell us about your team and what they'll be doing. So this includes you know, who's going to be doing the work, if you're partnering with any other organizations, who are they and what are they doing? Again, these are ways that you show us that you've got a solid plan in place. You do not need a date, um, but if you do have it, you should share it. Um, and your event must take place by the end of 2018. I bet a lot of people will want to do these in the fall, kind of leading up to Halloween, yeah. but you can do them any time of year. Um, and you can host them. And one idea for partnering, if you're a library, but let's say you've got an old, creepy, historic house museum in your community, that might be a really atmospheric place to do a Frankenfest. Mm -hmm. um, so be thinking about, you know, if for some reason I wanted to do this not at my library, where might there be a cool place in my town that would, like, add a little Frankenstein flair to our event? Yeah, and that would be a good partnering. Yeah, and I bet historic house museums would be thrilled to partner with you. Um, so, there, like I said, there is a required training workshop, so please mark your calendars now. Um, sorry. Um, oh, and I want to share a little bit more information about what happened during that workshop. We will be doing everything from just brainstorming ideas, sharing ideas. You'll have hands-on time to work. We'll be doing some communications training. Um, we will have um, talking about evaluation, fun and interactive ways. So we're going to evaluate, for instance, one part of our uh, Frankenfest that we're going to do, we'll have a pop-up exhibit of anatomical textbooks from the time of Frankenstein, which is really cool. So in that room, we're going to have people write haikus inspired by the exhibit, right? So what are ways that we can get people to tell us what they thought that are more fun and interactive? So we'll talk about ideas like that. And then we'll also make sure we get really into the nitty gritty. OK, I have a whole list of questions. Oh my goodness, Can we do, do that it. now? OK. Yeah. So, um, Right. So for communication support on the Frankenfest grants, is that also available for the Community Read grant? We will have um, a modified version of that. So we will have things like a press release template and logos in the program guide. There are a lot of um, checklists and details. We won't do quite as much um, help with actually designing stuff for you. Uh, it's more like we'll give you templates that you can customize. Okay. 
So um, on the templates question, I actually have a couple people on the webinar today that are not from Indiana. Well, hello! But they are interested in Frankenstein. Cool. So they were wondering, are logos and templates available for them as well? If or it is, is it on our website, you can use it. That's, that's, that's fine with me. Say, Some of yeah. it may say Indiana, so just be forewarned. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you're welcome to use anything that you find on our on website. website. And then I had a couple questions about applying for the grants. Oh. Can you apply for both? Yes. And then if you've already applied for a Quantum Leap grant, can you still apply? Yes, okay. please. We are, so yes, 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 yes. yes, yes. Okay. We want to give away our, like when you get a giant grant from the NEH, the thing that's so exciting is then you get to give it away. Yay. And we want to give away, now you're probably doing the math in your head, we have some other ways we're using that funding, but yes. we want that funding to go back out to communities around the state. Great. Thank you so much. Okay. So. I mentioned earlier that we're also creating a Frankenstein Speakers Bureau. So now I want to tell you a little bit about how that will work. Um, so the first thing is, what is it? Well, it's a group of experts and scholars that are ready to come to your community and deliver a compelling talk or workshop that helps your community think and learn about Frankenstein. Um, and so this has been curated, um, and we've, we've picked I think some good people, you know, what's kind of fun about this is you start telling people you're doing Frankenstein and people come out of the woodwork. And they're like, did you know that my great passion is Frankenstein? Oh I've been gosh. studying it for 35 years. That's amazing. Yeah, it is. Um, what this does is it gives your community access to high quality scholarship and the latest thinking about this amazing book. So I will admit, when I was starting to envision our Frankenstein programs, I got like a little worried that you just get these like weirdos that come out of your community They're like, I read the Wikipedia page on Mary Shelley, so now I'm an expert. And I was like, you know what, like I think we can do better. So that's one of the reasons we created this Speakers Bureau, so that you're really getting people who are thinking about this book in deep and, and really well considered ways. So we have experts from you know, Notre Dame and IU and Ball State and, and University of Indianapolis and independent scholars from around the state. So we want to make sure you have um, access to really high quality talks. So I want to share some of my favorite. There are 13 or 14 talks already in the Speakers Bureau and we'll continue to add a few. So one that someone's going to do is, at, the title is Crimes Against Humanity, Where Does the Gavel Fall for Morality and Science in Frankenstein? So this particular person is an anthropologist. Oh, cool. Um, and she is going to do a talk where she kind of looks at what if we were to put all the characters on trial in Frankenstein and how we would decide who's guilty or culpable for what happens in the book. Because there's a lot of crime. There's a lot. There actually is a trial in the book, too, which is really weird. I mean, this book is so weird it and strange. Weird. Um, which is good. Good, weird books are worth talking about. Absolutely. This one I love. It's called Frankenslam, where the poetry is alive. It's alive! Okay, so this is um, a workshop that has been put together by a guy who teaches down at um, IU. And he leads slam poetry writing workshops for students. He runs a big slam poetry camp at IU every year. He actually was the winner of our Indianapolis 500 um, poetry contest that oh, we did last year. I love yeah, that. Yeah, he one. guy. That guy is awesome. This is your race. Yeah, this is yeah. It's very right? good, Suzanne. So okay. anyway, so he's going to be uh, leading this workshop, and he has been sending me. All, he's like he's ordered a lab coat and goggles. Like he's getting into the mad scientist theme, and he he comes out of a hip hop tradition. So he's like really good at like connecting to kids and connecting hip hop and poetry and now Frankenstein. I mean, he's got it going on. That's so amazing. I'm excited about him. This talk I'm excited about and might be really, so this one's going to be comparing Jurassic Park and Frankenstein as really two tales of scientific misdeeds, right? Kind of like where someone starts messing around with nature and then there's these like yeah. unforeseen consequences and that then start people to, die. and then terrible things <laughs> start to happen. And then you've got creatures that you don't really know what to do with, yeah. right? So I was like, that's a really good comparison. Yeah. So I think that could be a fun talk for a lot of people. And then you could follow it up with like film fest and discussion. Absolutely, yeah. And you know, that gives something to the dinosaur people. Yeah, and you know, I have a nephew really who's a dinosaur person, and that's yeah. just, you always want to be thinking yeah. about dino people. Love it. Um, another talk that I think will be really fun is given by, um, it's called Stitched and Bound, Frankenstein and the Book. And this is um, a talk given by a curator who teaches down at, or who's actually at the IU Special Collections Library, the Lilly Library. Um, she is an, which is an expert on the history of the book itself. Oh. They have a first edition. 
Um, and she's also an expert. Her PhD is in um, depictions of the monstrous and monsters in 19th century literature. So she's like. You just want to like sit down and have coffee. With I her. know. She's the kind of. And she's cool. Like she's like a cool yeah. librarian. Nice. I know that's like your whole that's world. That's like all of us. Yeah. Okay. So Everyone on a webinar is cool. Yeah. So I think that, again, these are some of the talks that I'm really excited about, but there are many others available. Um, most of the talks are about 60 minutes, and that includes time for Q&A. Um, that Frankenslam workshop may be a little bit longer. You can just talk to Adam about that. Um, and there is a full catalog posted online, and we'll be adding new talks occasionally. Um, so one thing to think about in your application, um, I'll just go to the next screen here, how to book a speaker. So their contact information of all the speakers is listed in the catalog. And you can start reaching out to people at any time. So when you're preparing your application for a community read, if you know you want to book a speaker, you can go ahead and reach out to them and say, I really want to have a date that we would do this together. And um, I want to be able to tell in my application that I've already talked to you. But if, you're, if you know you want to do a speaker, but you're not sure who you want yet, you can wait till after the grant is awarded. Just be aware that their time may be less free at that point. I know someone's going to ask this. Can you book a speaker without having been awarded oh, one yes. of these grants? Oh, yes, Suzanne. This is so. We're going to talk about oh, that good. in a minute. Okay. So when you reach out to that speaker, you arrange a mutually agreeable date and time. So the key here is it's up to you to initiate this. We've created and provided the resources for you, but it's up to you and the scholar to come up with that date and time where they'll come give the talk. We have created a template agreement letter because I strongly, strongly, strongly encourage you to put details in writing. Think of this as like an MOU or even a contract. Um, now, you are not required to do this because, again, you are arranging this with a speaker. If you feel comfortable with like handshakes and phone conversations, that's fine. But again, a best practice here is to have an agreement letter, and we've created a template for you to do that. There is a standard $400 honorarium, and you should offer to cover travel. Some of the speakers will waive the travel for you, but you should, it would be very classy mm -hmm. if you award, if you offered to cover their travel. And does that mean the state rate of 38 cents a mile? That's the state rate? Yes. Oh my God. Usually we say the federal rate, which is 53 and a half cents a mile. Okay. Indiana, get with it. That's crazy. I cannot comment. You know on what? That. Yes, you cannot comment on that. And frankly, it's up to you how you want to navigate that. There you go. Um, you know, it's like, here's your gas card. So I don't know. I'm not going to get involved with that. Maybe our public libraries might choose the state rate. Yeah, you might be really clever and choose the state rate. Wow. Okay, I'm going to think about that later. Okay. Um, you will pay the speaker directly from your community read grant. Um, so but, I'm sorry, yeah. I'm just going to jump in again. So that means um, when you submit for the grant and you're, do you have to talk about your budget in your submission? You do not really, you kind no. of give us like a paragraph like how you think okay. you'll spend the money, okay. but you are not required to submit like a full detailed budget. But it would be important like if you yeah. did a, a budget that didn't seem to include this $400, yeah. that would be a problem. Yeah, right? you'd probably right. get, and you told me you wanted a speaker, right. I would go, hmm. Okay, so okay. you want to be sure to yeah budget for that that's so. right um as Suzanne had asked earlier can you book someone who's not doing community read yes so these folks are available I mean I tell them like if you want to talk to a corporate group as long sure. as they can pay you that's fine so let's say you're not doing the full community read but you'd like to take part by booking a speaker and you've got some friends of the library program money you can reach out to them and book them so but they are not free they're four hundred dollars. that is piece, correct plus yes. classy travel plus classy travel got it um and then uh, you will eventually let us know um, your dates by when you submit an event calendar to us. You do not need to worry about that for right now. That is only due after you've gotten the grant. This is one of those things we'll talk about in the webinar. Um, it's a really simple form where you're just going to send us, like, here are the dates and times of the events that we're doing. And that's when you'll let us know when you're doing your programs. And if someone is booking a speaker without having a grant, do they still need to send you their date so that it can be That would be great, your... but I'll probably get it from the speaker. Okay. So you're kind of like off Cover, the hook. But, but um, yeah. We, so one of the things that is happening because of that NEH grant is we're hiring a person to just manage Frankenstein programs for the next year and a half. That's amazing. So I will let them figure out how to get those dates. Cool. <laughs> I'm very excited to say. Yeah. We keep calling that person Frank because we haven't <laughs> hired them yet. So we're just, Frank is on it. Don't worry. It could be Francis. It could be Francis. And I, you know. Or whatever. You know me. Yeah. So it probably, yeah, no. Yeah. 
I, I will hire a man. I don't want to have gender discrimination. <laughs> this is a not very clear image, but just an example of the Speakers Bureau agreement letter, just so you kind of see what we're talking about. So, um, you know, you can, we have a Word version of this on our website, and it's just a place where you can say, this is the date and the time, this is when I want you to arrive. If there's any sort of special details, um, like you need AV or anything else like that. It's just a place to put all of that in writing. This is such a good best practice um, if you're ever doing anything that, ex you know, money is exchanging hands. So that appendix, uh, excuse me, that speaker agreement letter can be found in our program guide. We talked a little bit about this big old program guide that is on our website. So I just want to give a little more detail about what kinds of things you'll find in there. You can see the cover there on the left. Everything you need to imagine to implement your series is found in this program guide. It's like 35 pages long. So this includes checklists, sample budgets. There are awesome program ideas for adults, teens, and kids. And I want to thank Suzanne and Christy Fransman from the library. When we got your program ideas in the office, we were like, oh my god, these okay. are so good. Hey. So you guys really have so many good ideas. So there's just like, as you'll see, kind of a short paragraph for each one that you can read about. Again, you can invent your own thing, but you'll get inspiration from there. Um, there is a very long appendix that has additional reading and viewing lists. So if you want to pull books related to Frankenstein, you want to curate a film series. Oh, talk about the one that's on YouTube that's like 10 oh, yeah, minutes long yeah. or something. So the very first film adaptation that was ever done of Frankenstein was done by Thomas Edison. Amazing. And it um, was done in 1914. Amazing. Um, so it's like a 12 or 15 minute black and white silent film. And it's all on YouTube, so you could like, you know, show that and talk about it. And it's really neat. Um, one of the talks that's in our Speakers Bureau is a guy, he teaches at Wabash. He's actually an art professor. Um, and he's really interested in electricity in Frankenstein, because, cool. of course, the creature's kind of brought to life by Frankenstein. But the film, um, by Thomas Edison, sorry, what did I say? You said by Frank. Oh, God. But okay. You meant by electricity. I meant by electricity. Yeah. And so um, he's really interested because Thomas Edison did experiments with electricity. And of course, that's why one of the reasons he was interested in Frankenstein. Right. So he kind of compares the film and looks at it with electricity. It's cool. cool. He's smarter than I am. So I'll let him do the rest of the talking. Um, there are the speaker bureau talks and how to's. There are discussion tips and um, questions. And there are promotional tips and other kinds of details like that. In December, we will be updating the program guide. And at that point, we will be adding two more things to it. One, there will be some short essays by prominent scholars that can help you think and talk about important themes in Frankenstein. Um, and so we're designing that so that you kind of have different ways of looking at the book um, and help kind of inform your facilitation. And we'll create some discussion questions for each of those essays. Like if you're like, I really want to talk about Frankenstein and leadership. Mm -hmm. I really want to talk about Frankenstein and the history of science, right? Mm -hmm. Those are the kind, or Frankenstein and gender. Those will be ways to kind of think about the book. And then we'll also be updating that with all the evaluation information, including oh, sample surveys and stuff great. like that. So you'll just have the directions right there in front of you. I do have a question um, on your speakers. Bureau. Do you have anybody that can talk about Mary Shelley? Yes. So oh, we yay. currently have someone who is actually a first interpreter of Mary Shelley who can come in costume and be Mary Shelley. Um, and I, right now I'm trying to think if we have another person who's just more of like the straight biography of Mary Shelley. I don't think so yet, but I've talked to a couple people who are interested in maybe putting something like that in the Bureau. So stay tuned on that one, actually. And I also wanted to share with you that Frances Yates chimed in and said that her maiden name was Weinstein, Frances Weinstein. Oh, my goodness. And so you are Frances <laughs> Stein. Yeah, and she was teased as Einstein and Frankenstein. Well, those are both child. pretty good. So, yeah. Like, my nickname was always Nami Nuts. So, oh. you know, like, I think that that's better than that. And I was Susie Walker, what a hawker. <laughs> I know. Kids are monsters. Can we have some therapy? Frankenstein is about monsters and oh. the monster in all of us, and right? And they are the children. Okay, so let's pause there and see if folks want to share <laughs> program time. ideas that they want to share or have questions about. Um, how do you want to do this, Suzanne? Should so I, I did tell them already to go ahead and start typing, and I just have a couple people typing. So everyone, please start typing some ideas that you might have about program ideas for... Uh, now we have multiple typing. Yay. Okay. Program ideas for Frankenstein, what you might do if you had a community read, all that kinds of stuff. And I'll just start reading some of these out. So Terry says they want to partner with their public library, uh, CCPL, if any of you guys are on there. So Terry, I don't know what group you're from, but maybe you can let us know that. 
Um, Lori says, Leah, tremendous job of covering. Oh, Lori Durbin from Greensburg. She Yay. was my first boss. Oh, nice. In high school. That's amazing. I love you, Lori. <laughs> so Linda says, using clay or Play-Doh for participants to create their own monster. Love which it. Which I love. Um, Franken-stuffed animal programs for kids. That would be like uh, Franken-toys. We've talked about that. I think that might be in the program guide. Awesome. Lori loves you, too. Ah. So that's great. Uh, Terry's from Carmel High School, so she's interested in partnering with the public library. That's very cool. Um, Brenda says that they're planning a Frankenfilm fest. Awesome. There are so many great film adaptations of Frankenstein, but there are also stories that are really Frankenstein stories, even though they're not about Frankenstein. So if you've seen the movie Ex Machina, or even um, the show Westworld that's on HBO, which of course is based on a, I think it's, it's a Stephen, no, it's a Michael Crichton story. Mm -hmm. um, and then there was a film adaptation in the 70s. So the Westworld is definitely a Frankenstein story. That's cool. And really almost anything that talks about giving life to something inanimate. Like yeah. Wally. Wally is a, yeah, I Wally mean, is a very good version of what can yeah. happen with Frankenstein. Yeah, but, exactly. um, but yeah, and I also think, that, again, any stories about artificial intelligence are right. Frankenstein stories. Or cyborgs. There's actually a really famous academic book that was written in the 80s called The Cyborg Manifesto that looks at Frankenstein and tries to ask, like, what kinds of rights, if we can create lifelike creatures, what kind of rights do they have, right? So many fascinating things. Okay, so lots of, lots of other program ideas. Um, first of all, Franken toys is when you take toys apart and put them back together with other toys, so that's crazy. It's like a mad scientist lab. It is, and speaking of mad scientists, Jennifer says um, they're thinking of getting a mad scientist to do a hands-on lab for kids. Love it. Uh, somebody is getting electrical STEM kit, uh, kits for third grade classrooms. Can I yes, jump on that? Absolutely. So I think about when I was in fifth grade and the Purdue Extension agent came and taught us all how to build a circuit board, like with a battery and on like mm -hmm. a little piece of wood. Mm -hmm. So that might be someone you could reach out to or someone similar like that in your community to teach kids how to build um, a circuit and, and then look at Frankenstein. Again? The extension, extension agent, agent. Yeah. so 4-H. Yeah, That's who did it when I was in fifth grade, That's which cool. was 75 years ago, but, <laughs> it you know. It 75 years okay. ago. Okay. Um, also, 75. duct tape regatta to go with our weekend event. I'm not sure what all that would entail. I think you make a boat out of duct tape. Okay. I assume. So that would be fun. And have a race? I guess so. Okay. Uh, 3D print Frankenstein pencil cup prints for prizes. So cool. So printing 3D stuff. Frankenstein... Costume contest and walk. Hey, I I'm love in. It. I'm all in on That's these things. That's great. Um, if we don't get the speakers live, would we be able to get recordings with their permission? Um, They're thinking about an online course that they would want to Well, do. so we do not have a way set up right now for people to, to have those talks recorded. So I, I'm not sure about that. I'm probably going to probably guess that would not be likely, mm -hmm. but if you're developing an online course, I also know that um, IU East is going to be developing an online course based on Frankenstein and the Golem, which is a Jewish uh, Golem, yeah. myth, yeah. Um, and uh, the University of Indianapolis is doing an online course this fall, and I bet a lot of their talks will be recorded online. So, okay. And yeah. you said that there will be some essays eventually yes. available. Um, another idea, they're going to do some sort of reader's theater at their local opera house. I think that's very cool. Love and that. an old, you know, 19th century opera house would be a very atmospheric place to do Frankenstein programs. And then Annika says she read that Tambora book a few years ago. She'd be interested in that sort of multidisciplinary approach to Frank's place in history. Yeah. Lots of STEM, et cetera. And can I add to that? Like another way, another way to take your programming, maybe you want to do a series of classic, of readings of, of classic science fiction or classic horror, mm -hmm. right? So reading Frankenstein, but then reading other, you know, Dracula, or if you're into sci-fi, like Jesse, you're a sci-fi expert. Some like early important sci-fi or something and kind of doing a comparison over time of, of how that genre, how that book really set the template for everything that came later. So some more ideas. They have a local park that has a Halloween camper community weekend, and hopefully they can partner with them for cool. the Frankenstein theme. How about a Frankenstein Monster Mash 5K run? If you've got the energy to organize something like that, you that go great. for it. Lots of connections with artificial intelligence, STEM programming, creating an operation version of Frankenstein. You know the cool. old game yeah. operation. Um, Frankenstein pop-up card with lights. And movies, uh, Monster Squad is a movie that you can Ooh, do. Cool. It's really fun. Um, some people are hoping to partner with um, with some community uh, schools. I see IUPUC. IUPUC. So they yeah. are actually going to be one of the 13 colleges and universities 
um, that are partnering with us on One State, One Story. So that's a great opportunity to partner. Another partner would be the Louisville Science Center. They have events uh, with science activities for kids and teens. Wow. Um, Francis Yates at IU East. Oh, somebody just did something really long. Let's see if I can get back to there. Uh, they are comparing to the Gollum myths. Also, there's some relevant Japanese film versions. So I don't know if anybody has seen um, oh, the, oh, the MSTK, what am I trying to say? Mystery Science yes, Theater. Yes, thank you. Mystery Science Theater. They, they're, this past year, you know, they had a new thing. And they have a, they have a song that's about every community has a monster. It's that's awesome. Every country has a monster. <laughs> I can't remember the rest of it, but that is, you could totally see that song. Um, and then also, uh, Sarah says they're getting a head start this year at Muncie. They're having a Mary Shelley salon and tea. Awesome. Thank you guys so much. Uh, yes, I will grab the chat after the webinar. Thanks for sharing all of those. I'm going to turn it back over to Leah. We have nine minutes left. She still has things to share. Yeah, we want to kind of get through a so, couple more things. So At this point, hang on to your questions, and we'll get them at the end end. So just briefly, um, the easy ways to incorporate Frankenstein is to just, if you've got a regular book club that already meets, is to read Frankenstein in 2018. Our Novel Conversations program has sets of Frankenstein available for you to borrow. You can go and reserve that today. It is free. Um, we will send it to you via Info Express. We also have a graphic novel version of Frankenstein that's available through the State Library's um, circulating uh, book sets. So depending on what age group, or frankly, you could have adults read both and compare. I think that'd be really cool. Mm -hmm. um, and you can also use Novel Conversations, we have other titles from science fiction and, and horror that you could use to program a series with. So the next part I just want to share some opportunities for you to be a learner. We've been activating your imaginations as programmers, but let's say you yourself just want to geek out about Frankenstein. So there are a couple of opportunities. We are going to be hosting a digital gaming workshop in February. We're bringing in a nationally renowned game design expert who is going to teach us how to design and build an online narrative game. Um, and so it's called Making Monsters, Making and Playing Monsters. It's really fun. Um, and so the reservation fee is $25, and that does include your lunch. And we can give LEU credits or CEU credits. Um, so space is limited because we're limited to the size of the lab that we're using at IUPUI. Um, but you can reserve your spot today. So let's say you're just interested in learning more about digital gaming. This would be a great opportunity to do that. And all the information's on your website? All the information's on our website. I'll great. show you that in a moment. You do not need any prior gaming or coding experience to participate in that workshop. Got it. Um, you can be a total muggle. Is that the right technology term? Okay. The other thing that's coming up is we are going to be doing a Frankenstein weekend retreat. Um, this is Book Lover Nerd Camp. Throughout that retreat, there will be talks by renowned scholars. There will be breakout book discussions. There will be Frankenstein-inspired meals. It is March 23rd and 24th at DePauw. So basically, it will start late afternoon, early evening, um, like 4 or 5 p.m. on a Friday, and we'll wrap up by 5 p.m. on a Saturday. We are still working out the final price, but thanks to that NEH grant, we're going to be able to very seriously subsidize the cost to you. Now, travel is on your own. Um, so, and we have a hotel block available, and we'll be sharing all that information um, in the next few weeks. Um, but that price includes all your meals, materials, and books, and surprises, and all that kinds of stuff. And you get a ton of LEU and CEU credit for that, because that's like a 10 or 12 hour um, total time. So that'll be really fun. We've never done something like this before, but we're really, really, really excited about it. Meanwhile, elsewhere in Indiana, just to kind of overwhelm you, um, because of our partnership with universities, so many things are going to be happening around the state. And one way that you might use your funds is to do, a, like if you needed to reserve a van or a bus and travel people to any of these um, things that will happen. So there will be special exhibits at IU and Notre Dame. There is a community university cor course with talks and musical performances at University of Indianapolis happening this fall. Um, South Bend, there is a play that was based on Frankenstein from the 1820s. Um, it actually helped popularize the story at a time when more people could go to a play than read a book. Right. Um, and so they are reviving that play. It's called Presumption. Um, so that will be happening next fall in South Bend. Um, there are some professors at Ball State who wrote an original musical based on Frankenstein. That now, will don't get... just gloss over that. That's okay. amazing. Yeah, so it's there's a like musical. a guy who teaches Yay. acting, and 
there's a guy who teaches okay. like how to write That's songs yes. and they collaborated on a Frankenstein musical. So that will be coming oh, back to so life. Um, there will be film festivals happening all, like from Manchester to Notre Dame to IU to Indianapolis, all over the place. Um, and again, you might think about using your community reads funds to help cover transportation or admission. I think the exhibits are all free actually, but like, let's say there's a performance that has a small ticket. Um, we have been talking, I'm probably not supposed to say this out loud, but we've been talking with Indianapolis Marion County Public Library about theming their 2018 summer reading around the idea of monsters and tying that to Frankenstein. So if you are in the Indianapolis Marion County Public Library, you can go ahead and apply for those community read grants, of course, but there might be some other things coming down the pike. I probably can't say too much more about that, but that's pretty exciting. We are also, and I'll make a pitch for this now and this in the follow-up email that you're getting, there's also information. There's so much going on that we are going to have a special newsletter that runs through the end of 2018 called Franken News. And once a month, you'll get a digest of kind of everything that's happening around the state um, related to Frankenstein and if there are like, our, you know, registration deadlines and stuff like that, that's where you can keep up to that. Also, of course, always visit our website. So I want to quickly go through a couple FAQs. What do I do if my library or school needs more than 50 books? So multiple branches in a system can each apply for community read grant. So let's say you're, I think Vigo County might do something like this, where let's say you've got six branches, and you're, so you really are imagining something pretty elaborate. All six branches could apply for a community read grant, and then you'd get 300 books that way. Um, you can also use that $1,000 grant to purchase additional copies of the book. Um, this is great because this book is in the public domain, so it's pretty cheap. Um, is early notification possible for schools that want to do fall programs as part of the 2017-2018 school year? Yes, but I need you to reach out to me pretty much as soon as possible and let me know. We did actually have an early decision application open over the summer, and we did award a few schools early because I know they want to do stuff in this school year. Um, so I need to know that as soon as possible. And I will say you probably won't get all of the swag in time. Like, let's say you're doing programs in October. But we have some capacity to do a few early decisions that's only available to schools because they need to get started on stuff this fall. Um, how will applications be awarded? The number one thing we're looking for are the strength of your ideas, your creativity, your thoroughness in filling out the application. We're also looking for your demonstrated capacity. So I want to see, and I'm not the only one who picks, that you've got a great team in place, you've got lots of enthusiasm, and you have a clear expectation or understanding of what's expected. Um, we will secondarily take into things like geographic diversity and economic need, because we want to make sure that we're covering as much of the state and as many Hoosiers as possible. Will there be another chance to apply if I miss the Halloween deadline? Possibly. So I will say that. But this, probably not. But probably not. That's exactly right. We want to award as many of these as possible by how, on our Halloween deadline so that people can get going. Let's say we only got 45 applications. Unlikely, but let's say that happened. We would open up another deadline probably like, and it would be due at the beginning of February. Um, last thing here, I just want to give a sneak peek of something exciting coming to life. So exciting! Yes. So we will be collaborating with the State Library and the Center for the Book for the first ever Indiana Sci-Fi and Horror Writers Festival um, next fall. And that is going to be a teen-focused event, although, you know, grown-ups who love sci-fi and horror are welcome to attend. So we'll be celebrating Hoosier writers of science fiction and horror inspired by this amazing book. There will be author talks and book signings. We will have a makerspace and experiments. We've been thinking about doing creative writing workshops and showcases of teen writing. Um, we're really excited to do a marathon screening of Stranger Things, which is set in Indiana and is a great illustration of the conventions of horror and science fiction. Yeah, it is. Um, and looking at that and thinking and talking about that and how that show illustrates those ideas. We have not determined the final date, but that will be coming in the fall next year, thanks to this grant from the NEH. Whew. Yes. Okay. So, so <laughs> the big question is... Yeah. Okay. Oh, someone did say, how did you get the rights to show Stranger Things? We haven't yet, but we they budgeted yet, for it. But they budgeted for it. <laughs> okay. okay, so we'll figure that yeah. out later. Uh, can you go ahead and please show us on the website yeah. uh, where to find the program yes. guide? So if you're on um, Indiana Humanities website, um, quantumleap.indiana.com. Oh, can is you, it not showing? How should I do this? Just start at indianahumanities.org. Yeah. Um, 
And then everyone that's hanging out, I will have your LAU up Sorry. as soon as Leah shows us. This is like watching my dad use a computer, I and know. I apologize. So she's just navigating to their website. Let's see if this is going to yeah. work. Can you guys see the Indiana Humanities website because it's not showing up on my screen? No. Okay, no. All right, well, I think we can't show them then. I'm sorry. Okay, so I'll just say if you go to um, this quantumleap.indianahumanities.org. Um, along the top page of that, there is a um, just a tab that says Frankenstein. You can go there. You can also go to .org slash Frankenstein and get to our Frankenstein pages. There's a page for community reads. There's a page for Frankenfest grants. There's a page for the Speakers Bureau. There's a page for the digital gaming workshop, et cetera, et cetera. So hopefully you can find all that information. You can also call or email me with questions or ideas, um, lnamias at indianahumanities.org. Um, that's my direct line on the phone num on the screen there. Questions? Nope, we're good. All right, sorry we came up a little over time and we went fast at the end. <clears throat> okay, everybody, so I'm going to go ahead and put your LAU certificate there. Um, the link, to, can you explain to them where the link to the newsletter is? Yes. So. Um, Here's the thing. You guys will get a follow-up email, I think, to everybody yes. on the screen. Yes. And there should be a link to sign up in that follow-up. Okay, great. So what Lee is saying is that when we get the uh, webinar archived on our archived webinar page, and I'll send this link to everybody, there's going to be links to a lot of the things that she's talked about today. Um, so, so you'll be able to have all of your things in one place. So that'll be good. Yeah, and I'll make sure. I'm not actually sure where the link to sign up is on our website for the Franken newsletter. Um, so we will work on that, and if you like visit our website tomorrow, I can guarantee it would be up by then. Okay, well I want to thank Leah so much. We are good to go. Um, Lisa, you can go ahead and turn us off. Thank you, Leah. Thank you guys. Thank you.